Major Keys. I'm Keys. I'm here with professional basketball player Lexi Brown. Thank you so much for joining me today in this crazy quarantine situation. How's it going for you? Um, it's fine. Just a little bored. Um, you know, obviously I miss playing basketball, being on the court, um, seeing my friends. You know, <laughs> I had so many plans getting back from overseas. I was going to travel, go see a bunch of my people and stuff. But um, one of the bright things is, you know, my entire family's here, and I can't remember the last time all of us were in the same place for more than a few days. So that's been like a really, really bright spot in all this. All right. So for the purpose of this show is I just like to showcase women in sport, and you're the first uh, player that I've gotten to interview. So that's, you know, a totally different perspective, and I'm excited to hear, um, you know, your journey in sport. How did you find sport? And was basketball your, your first sport and only sport? Um, well, my dad played, my mom played too. So my dad played professionally and my mom played up to college. So basketball was going to find me eventually. Um, I tried tennis. What did I do? Tennis, soccer, baseball. My parents kind of let me just do whatever. Uh, I did some dance for a little bit too. Um, and then around like 11 or 12 is when I kind of put everything else down and just, you know, focus strictly on basketball. And um, it's been great ever since. Yeah, I would say so. That has worked out for you. Yeah, it works um, actually nicely. <laughs> what do you think, like, you know, sport, being in sports taught you um, in those early stages? Because, I mean, as we know, like the statistics show that, that girls drop out of sport at an earlier rate than, than boys do. So what right. do you think taught you? Um, I think, well, for me personally, I was like a huge tomboy when I was younger. So, you know, I feel like a part of that reason why girls drop out is, you know, they kind of find their, you know, girly identity earlier. You know, I didn't really find mine until like late ninth grade, tenth grade. Um, so, you know, all through elementary school and middle school, you know, I was just hanging around with the boys, getting dirty, being outside. Like, I just loved all that, um, you know. Also, I had a great, you know, support system with my with my parents. Um, they always stood around me with, you know, some awesome girls and other awesome families that had young girls that were in sports as well. Um, I just think that um, it's just it's kind of different now. Like when we were growing up, we didn't have like social media. Like, a, this is what you need to look like. This is what you need to be doing as a female. This you didn't see like what everyone else was doing. You kind of just had your own little bubble and your friends and you kind of did what you wanted to do like all my friends were like little little boys little tomboys running around like that's what all my friends were um so I think that was huge for me and you know like I said it's just it's just society's just different now um but I think that we as professionals and women in sports like we can do an even better job of encouraging young girls you know stay involved in you know athletics for sure you talk about you know um like looking up to people and um, who are those role models for you? You know, right now, again, a lot of those role models are like influencer type and they look right. this way and they look this way. But for you, when you were growing up being that tomboy, who were those role models for you? Right. Um, for, you know, basketball wise, I definitely looked up to, you know, like Lisa Leslie, Kenneth Parker. Um, my favorite player growing up was Chrissy Tolliver. Um, Swing Cash, you know, you know, just those, the ones that, you know, they, the way they just carry themselves, it's just yeah. so much, much confidence. They all aren't necessarily like early, like how I am now, but obviously when I was younger, you know, that's who I wanted to play. What I want to be, I wanted to be a, a college star. I wanted to be in WNBA. Like those were like check marks on like my, my to-do list, you know, for, for, for myself when I was little. Um, but I like the type of, female woman and athlete I am now I didn't really have that to look up to when I was growing up and so I kind of looked up to my mom some of my mom's friends some of my friends moms you know who were just like just beautiful women taking care of their families you know providing you know doing what they had to do you know keep their household in order um so you know now growing up I've kind of like meshed the two um and then I'm just hoping that I could be an example for um, you know, a young girl, you know, who's looking up and she's like, well, I want to be girly, but I also want to, you know, play the sports and I just want to do both. So I'm hoping that, sorry, my dog. <laughs> I'm hoping that, like, where did he come from? <laughs> um, I'm just hoping that I can be the, that type of role model for, for young girls, you know, up, up and coming and, you know, again, trying to keep more girls in sports. And, and representation is, is so important, especially being a girl, but being a woman of color as well. Right. Um, 
and I was I tweeted about it the other day actually I was watching the UConn Stanford game that they replayed from like 2010 mm -hmm. um, and just even seeing that women of Troy documentary um, I'm not, have you seen that yet I haven't seen it yet but I heard it's amazing oh, so good. It, yeah. it just makes you think like you can't believe that there was a time that you know you couldn't see women on TV playing sports right. like, for us at this age it's hard to it's hard to fathom um, but right. I was watching that and I was thinking, you know, for me, this was that like golden era of college basketball for me. And, and I know we're not far apart in age. What right. was that golden era for you that you saw those women on TV like Chrissy Tolliver and thought, you know, that's what I want to be. That's, you know, what I want to do. For me, probably the moment where I was like, this is like what I want to do. I think, was it 2009? It was when it was, it was a Tennessee Stanford game. The final four was in Tampa and me and my best friend at the time we we drove up to Tampa and uh, we actually didn't have any tickets so we got there and we found tickets when we got there and we were right at half court like maybe 10 rows up from the court and we got to watch Candace Parker and Candace Wiggins you know go at it in the final four and that at that moment I was like oh yeah like I need to get to a final four like this is what I want to do and I think from that moment on I've just seen you know the game elevate, you know, the media coverage elevate. And I think every year, you know, they do something more for the women's game. And I think this year, I mean, it stinks that like all this happened. Like, I think this was going to be the most like publicized and talked about tournament like ever. Absolutely. And it's like, so, it was so disappointing um, for the, that this all happened. Everything got canceled because there was so much buzz around the tournament for the women. Um, that we haven't seen in a while. And I think every year, you know, ever since, you know, UConn has been losing, there's been more and more conversation about the tournament. And, you know, obviously you don't wish anybody to lose, but I think other teams winning has been like one of the best things ever for our sport. Like now people are just like, oh, we're not watching because we know UConn's going to win. Like this year, I had no idea who was going to win. Right. Honestly, I really didn't. Like people have their favorites, obviously, but I had no idea who was going to win the tournament. So I was super excited to watch. Um, but, you know, I think moving forward, hopefully we can bottle this all up and then they can take it into next season. Yeah, I think I, I, the part I love so much about this year was, was that, you know, the top four had like such a drastically different style of play. Right. So you could say you thought, you know, who you thought were going to make the final four. But at the end of the day, I mean, the play style could totally be different, you know, exactly. versus Pac-12. Like it was just, you know. Yeah, and it was it was it was super exciting, and then with the, then throwing the USA games, um, in there, you know that was great. Even though, I mean, I'm glad that I mean I'm not glad they lost, but the fact that they did lose, like everyone was like, oh, okay, like look at this this young group, like they got next, and like I haven't really heard anybody talking about next like ever, like because even the players that I grew up watching are still in the league, so that's like who everyone knows and stuff and I feel like we're like on the cusp of like the next generation finally being able to get their chance to you know shine yeah no absolutely and I'm looking forward to that because I'm sure you're gonna be a part of that group but um okay so you have a, a amazing high school career you become a McDonald's All-American go on to college get to some final fours have a very successful college career and then you get drafted in the first round of the WNBA draft and have you had time to, I guess, reflect on, you know, how amazing of a feat that is in and of itself? I mean, for former basketball players like me, you know, it's such a small number that get to that level. Have you been able to reflect on that? Um, I definitely got to reflect after my rookie year was over because, you know, it all happened so fast. You know, the season ends, the draft, and then training camp is like two weeks, less than two weeks later. So I was like focused on finishing my finals up and, you know, packing up my apartment and like just getting ready to go. So, you know, I didn't really have any time to just, you know, breathe, but um, even throughout this season and definitely like in between um, the season and like overseas time, I really got to kind of just sit and be like, yeah, wow, like we did it. Like, this is what we've been working for. Like I was, that's what I tell my parents. Like I, I can't thank them enough for, everyone for me um, since I've been young to get to this point, but you know, our, our lifestyle is such a whirlwind. So actually right now has been a great time of reflection because, you know, we're supposed to be getting ready for training camp right now and we don't have a start date. So they just postponed it yesterday. So I think this has been like the first time a lot of us have been able to just like, 
relax and calm down. I mean, it's a little stressful that we don't know when it's going to start because we're like, when are we, when should we start getting ready? Like, when should we start trying to get back in the playing shape and our playing mindset and stuff? So that's the only tough thing. But um, definitely right now has been like a huge time of reflection for sure. And so you get to the league, which I don't, I don't think people grasp again how small the number of college basketball players go on to play, not only professionally, but when you talk about the WNBA, like it's a right. big, small group of people. Um, who were your, well, you, you mentioned a few of them, Chrissy Tolliver's in the league. Who were those idols that you now know, you know, that it's just like, it's so strange to play against them. Um, right. What are those relationships like? Yeah, Christy was one for sure. So I had met her like when I was playing at Maryland. She had come to a practice and she was at the Final Four. And I remember the first time I met her, like I couldn't like speak. I was like, whoa, like this is like who I love. Like this is who I model my game after. Um, so that was when I was a freshman. So you fast forward to, um, so my rookie year, I didn't really play that much. So I didn't really play against her. But last summer, we had a scrimmage against them and then we played them I think three or four times and I just like remember like hitting like a three in her face and I'm just like wow <laughs> wow I remember oh I did have a moment in my rookie season one of, one of the few games I did play we played Phoenix and I hit a few in DT's face and I was like wow I just hit a three and I had a Tarazi face <laughs> oh my gosh so that was a big moment um and then the most surprising uh, you know, mentor and friend that I made was last summer with Simone Augustus. And, you know, I've always been a huge fan of her game. And, you know, I just never knew her, like what type of person she was. And her personality is so different than what I expected it to be because she's like so, such a fierce competitor. So I've only seen her in that light. And then just meeting her off the court and spending time with her and picking her brain, like she became like one of the, the vets that I was closest to all last summer. So, I mean, there's little moments like that where you just kind of like, wow, like, I'm here. Like, these are my teammates. These are my opponents now. This is who I'm playing against. Like, I just was a sponge. I've just been a sponge. And I think that's the best thing you can be, especially as a younger player. Yeah, always learning. No, that's great. Um, and so I, I think the reason that I've enjoyed kind of watching your evolution as a player, um, again, we – we played against each other once in high school, so I've definitely known of you for a long time. You were a problem in the game that I did play against you. The um, thing that I like most about your game is that, you know, it's, it's great when you're 6'2", and you can shoot the ball, and you can dribble, and all those different things. That's great, and I don't take away from anybody. But, you know, you're 5'9", at least that's what you're listed at. You're 5'9", you're, you're shooting the air out of the ball, and you can handle the ball. And you've been able to do that for a long time, and you stake – you know, your skill on, on defense as well, you know? So I think I appreciate that because to, for young girls, it's always important to see someone who, you know, is, looks more like them than, you know, let's say maybe someone who's 6'2". Like I'm never going to be 6'2", but right. I, can, I can work to, to try to be a player like Lexi Brown. So I've always appreciated that. And again, we get back to, you know, what visibility and representation mean in girls being able to see you. Um, Recently in the WNBA, or the, the past year, there's been a lot of news about the CBA, about media right. contracts. How important have those things been in the last year for players? Yeah, I think that us as players, we were doing a poor job of, um, you know, spinning those conversations to, to benefit us. I think there was a time where we were whining a lot, like complaining with the comparisons and getting offended, and you know, going back and forth and I think that there was a switch in everybody to be like let's just spin this you know give props to you know the NBA you know that they, they support us so much you know the least we can do is support them back like it's not their fault like the way the pay the way it is um I think that we finally s switched modes and you know kind of went to a more uplifting thing and then obviously knowing that the CBA was coming up I think that the players were more vocal around each other and to each other about what we needed and what we wanted, um, you know, as players and as employees. Um, you know, I think our our player association and NECA and all of them, they did an amazing job of communicating with us, keeping us in the loop. Um, I think that's something that, you know, they lacked in the last CBA. But again, you know, we have phones, social media, Twitter, email, like there's 
you you can get a hold of somebody at all times like no matter what like you don't answer your phone all right i'm gonna message you oh you don't message i'm gonna tweet you i'm gonna whatsapp you so it's like we had so many you know forms of communication um and i just think that it's just been a more uplifting and positive um dialogue you know i think that there was a time where it was just like why don't we get paid or why are people talking about how we don't get paid and now it's just like it's a blessing that we're here you know let's look at how far we've come um because i think that was also kind of a slap in the face to, you know players like simone players like christy lindsey whalen who were you know there when it wasn't good like at all and you know i think we should be super appreciative that you know they stuck it out you know they did those long bids overseas with nothing like no but no instagram no none of that they did that for us so that we don't have to you know forever we don't have to be stuck in russia for eight months um, because we're not getting, you know, paid enough over here. So I think that I think it's more of a appreciative dialogue, you know, more positive di dialogue. And I think that it's been really beneficial for us. I think as a fan, you know, seeing that come out and, and knowing that's where I feel like, you know, professional organizations are being pushed toward. Um, it was a very exciting time as a fan. And obviously I bought the uh, W. Yes, I have one too. Uh, I love those shirts. This is my, yeah, I was going to say, this is my favorite shirt. I mean, obviously, I own a lot of t-shirts, but this one, you know. Yeah, I love that shirt. It's like simple, work. <laughs> but it's like to the point. I love it, yeah. You talk about, you know, Instagram and storytelling and getting y'all's story out there. Um, y'all just posted the Don't Rush Challenge, a, a few of y'all, yesterday. And I, th <laughs> and I thought yeah. that that was so important because I think a lot of the time, um, women's sports have not been accessible. Uh, or maybe relatable, or maybe right. not the exposure hasn't been enough, right? So for a long time, you felt like you've known LeBron James, right? Like you've right. been, if he didn't have access to Instagram Live, like you still felt like you knew him because people were covering who he was outside of, you know, the court. And so I thought that that challenge, you know, it lends itself, again, it's, you know, one of those things that, uh, one of those trends on social media, right. but it does such a simple thing of showing young girls y'all like, y'all's personality and who you are and that uh like women's basketball players are not like a monolith you're not all the same right like y'all right. the way y'all dress and all those different things like i thought that came across in the video um yeah so i can y'all for doing that and i think that that's you know the way of the future for women's basketball or women's sports in general absolutely okay so one of my last questions uh, obviously, right now, we don't have a lot of sports moments <laughs> to watch. Uh, can you think of your favorite female sports moment? It doesn't have to be basketball, but, you know, your favorite female sports moment of all time. Of all time? Yes. Um, I have a few, but the most recent one probably was um, when little Coco <laughs> got yeah. beat, beat, she beat Venus. Which one did she beat? Whoever she beat the first time when she first popped on the scene. It was Venus. Yeah, that was amazing. I love that. Yeah. And then when she beat uh, Osaka after Osaka had busted her butt, like, that was also amazing. I love that. I love her. I'm a fan for sure. She's because I, I thought I was going to be a tennis player. Like, I loved growing up. I was watching when Venus and Serena had the beads in their head. Like, I was a fan back then. And I was like, I want to be like Venus and Serena. And then I got on the tennis court and I was I hate it here. I don't like it. It's hot. I want to go home. I want to go home. It's hot. I'm by myself. I'm getting screamed at by myself. And I was like, no, I'm done with this. But uh, definitely Venus and Serena were like my first like athlete idols for sure. Um, you know, seeing little black girls on a tennis court was unbelievable, especially yeah. being young. Um, but yeah, Coco definitely has my vote for best sports moment of the of the year to both of them, both moments. You mentioned Venus and Serena. Are there any other female athletes that you, you know, either look at now and think, okay, like the way that they approach their game is what, how I want to, but that you kind of uh, maybe like emulate? Yeah. Um, I love watching the USA track team during the Olympics. So Allison Felix, huge fan of hers. Um, and then what she did for, you know, the maternity leave and stuff with the Nike sports was incredible um, for her to do that. Simone Biles, of course, is a goat. Um, who else did I want? I'm hoping she can stay in shape to be able to go to next year. Because, you know, gymnasts. I that know. I feel so bad. Like, 
Because you, you like trained your whole four, you trained four years and they're like, ah, one more year. Right. Um, so, I mean, I think physically they're going to be fine, but I think mentally that's probably a little bit of a, a strain for them. Um, but, but the physical part for them at this point is probably the easy part. It's the mental toughness that, you know, sets you apart, especially at the Olympics. Um, but yeah, I was definitely disappointed because I love the Olympics like so much. So, um, but again, it's about everybody's safety and we can wait a year. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny when you said that um, I hate it here. You know, <laughs> first of all, my brain works in like memes and gifts. Oh, and yeah. So <laughs> Little Jalen Smith. Yeah, Jaden Smith from Karate Kid. <laughs> yep. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so my last question. The show is called Major Keys. And I, I like to ask my guests at the end to give the viewer one major key. So advice, uh, DJ Khaled inspired. Oh, some advice on, you know, I guess, uh, how to follow in, not maybe not your footsteps necessarily, but how to achieve um, excellence in the way that you do. Let's see. You know, a lot of major keys, but let's see. I think the one that helped me the most is probably just doing what you want to do for you. Like, you know, end of the day, like you just got to lock in and stay focused on yourself. Um, if you get caught looking at what someone else is doing, you're going to miss, you know, the blessing that's coming up ahead for you. Um, I, my parents did a great job teaching me that when I was younger. Like, don't worry about what everyone else is doing, what anybody else is saying about you, about your game, about what you can be, who you can be in the future, because you know how hard you work, you know, what you want to do. And if, you know, you stay focused and locked in and have faith, then, you know, you can achieve whatever you want. That's great advice. Thank you so much for joining me today. It really was a pleasure. You're very easy to talk to, very personal. Thank you. I would you know, I saw, I saw that anybody who want to talk, just call me, you know. I'm stuck in the house with my family, which I love that. Don't get me wrong. But it's nice to talk to other people. Right. No, I agree with that. But, yeah. Thank you. Good luck. I'm hoping uh, that we will see some WNBA basketball call very, very soon. Uh, and then hopefully maybe a gym will open for you so you can, you know, get some shots in. Tired of this outdoor court life. Tired of it. Keys, keys, keys. I got the keys, keys.